God wants you to have absolute victory because God's got big intentions for you. He doesn't want anything interfering with the big plans. Now, his intentions for you involve a kingdom. That's big stuff. It involves a transition from one kingdom to another, from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God, uh, from the power of Satan to the power of God, from false ideas to the truth, and by the way, nothing but the truth, from selfishness to genuine love. Now, this call, this change, this movement from one kingdom to another are given to us in Scripture in the way of analogy as from darkness into light. And I want you to see how God fully intends you to have and to know the five basic steps that assure absolute victory and move you from darkness into light Absolutely. Well, let's first of all take a look at the call. I hope you've got your teaching notes ready to go and pen, pencil, paper, and you'll want to jot the references down at least and look them up again. The call from darkness to light. Here is the scripture. You, and I want you to know that this scripture is personal just for you. You are a chosen. Well, that's pretty good too. God choosing. He's got intentions for you. You are a chosen generation. Look at this, you're even royalty. And you have a priesthood, that means contact with God. And you are a holy nation, and maybe you think the only description here that fits you is this one about being a peculiar people because somebody told that to you. But well, watch this. All these things are true, and here's the reason. That you should be able to show forth the praises of Him. Now watch this phrase. Who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light? Not just into light, but into marvelous light. That's what God has planned for you. Now, however, with this there comes a problem. And here is the problem in the book of Isaiah. Because the scripture says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Look at this, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. The problem is that people have said something that is light is really dark and something that's dark is really light and they have switched it around until many of us today don't know the difference between darkness and light. It goes on to say that they put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter and then it says, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Now the problem remember, is that they have put darkness for light, good for evil and evil for good, so that an entire generation, a whole society, can be totally mixed up and not even know the difference between right and wrong, up and down, forward and back, left and right. They don't know the difference between light and darkness. You see, that's why the scriptures tell us in the last days, perilous, perilous times shall come. It's perilous when you don't and when you can't tell whether something is white or black, light or dark, because it's been switched around in our minds by so many forces. So what we want to learn, however, <clears throat> is how to break fellowship with all these works of darkness and live in the light, the light that the scripture speaks of it when it says, and here's a wonderful verse about you. Here it is. The path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more under the perfect day. Your path should be getting so bright. Your life should be emitting so much light. Every day gets better. It's like you ride upon the high places of the earth. You're so excited because the light's getting brighter until that perfect day. However, the same scripture is on to say that the wicked is as darkness and they don't know what they stumble at, see? So the question heavy upon us then today is this, how, how can we transition into this marvelous light? And so I want to give you five vital steps from the scriptures to absolute victory 
that can move us out of darkness into the marvelous light. I tell you, when you get out of darkness into light, you're out of depression into encouragement. You are out of the doldrums into excitement, and many other aspects are going to be true for you. Now, the first step, and get ready to write it down, you need these five basic vital steps. Number one is that we must recognize the extent of the kingdom of darkness. Look at this diagram with me. You can see over on this side we have Satan's realm here and over on the left in the realm of light is God's uh, kingdom. Here's the question though. How far in this direction does Satan's kingdom extend? And how far for that matter does God's kingdom extend in this direction? Where is the division between these two kingdoms? Now, why don't you go ahead and take a guess? Because, you see, some people will say, well, Satan's kingdom must be at least over here to the really, where it's really dark. Somebody else says, well, I think Satan's kingdom is sort of where the gray line is. Or some think it's in the middle of the gray. Where is the line? How far in this direction does Satan's kingdom extend? Or does it come to the edge of the light here? Now the fact is, and this is shocking, it is shocking to understand where this line really is. Are you ready? Look at the diagram because Satan's kingdom reaches right into the kingdom of light. Satan can look like light. Now I want you to see this in the scripture. Here it is. Satan himself is transformed, look at this, into an angel of light. Satan transformed into an angel of light right over here. Look at this next part of the verse. Therefore it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. Satan's got ministers working right over in this area of light. Now, remember, to call out of darkness, in order to respond to this call from darkness to light, we have to understand the extent of that kingdom of darkness. Now, it's like this, that in these gray areas, Satan has hooks. See them in the diagram. And he wants to move us from light into the gray, and then from the gray into the darker gray, and from the gray into the black. But he works in this whole realm, this entire zone here, is a kingdom of darkness. You see, one of the things that happens is that teenagers argue with their parents about something here that's in the gray area. They don't see it as dark. They see it as gray. In fact, you know, um, if you ever wanted to poison somebody, you know what to do is you cover the poison up with something that looks good. Here's a candy. Candy coating on the outside, but poison on the inside. Now, there are a lot of disguises. See, only part of the candy is poison. If you had a cherry pie, uh, how much arsenic uh, does it take to spoil that cherry pie? How much poison does it take? How much of the pie do you want? You see, the whole pie is affected by a little poison. And that's what the scripture says. Know ye not that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little bit of black, a little bit of the darkness, look at this now, brings darkness into the whole lump. All the grays are part of the kingdom of darkness. Now, in contrast for a moment, look at this scripture. Let's talk about this area here, this kingdom of light. What is it like? How is it different? Here it is. God is light, and in him is no darkness whatsoever. No darkness at all. Well, you see, the question becomes, 
in looking at this whole spectrum from darkness to light is <clears throat> where is the standard? Where do we draw the line? Satan is trying to move people from light to gray, from gray to absolute darkness. And what I want us to see today is that the call out of darkness is not just a call out of the dark, but it's a call out of the gray, all of the gray, and out of that which even looks like light, but it's not. Let's look at a few scriptures to help us get this, because the first step, and by the way, if we only get one step today, we'll have done really well, because the vital step of discovering the extent of the kingdom of Satan is so important. Look at the scripture. The light of the body is the eye. So if the eye, therefore, is single, your whole body shall be full of light. If all that you get coming into your body through the eye is light, then all you'll have is light. But watch the next part of this verse. But if the light, but if your eye is evil, um, the whole body shall be full of darkness. And if the light that you took in you is actually darkness, how great is the darkness going to be that's inside of us? And that's the issue, you see. Because we take in what we think is light and is darkness, and our lives become filled up with darkness. And this darkness comes in many different kinds. Let's talk for a few moments about some of these kinds of darkness. Let's talk about moral darkness first. You know, if we put on this diagram over here, there's, there's almost unmentionable immoralities over here, like um, bestiality, sex with animals, and uh, sex with children, can you imagine? And uh, homosexuality, and adultery, and fornication, and divorce, and uncleanness. And then we get in here in the grays, and it's like self-abuse, and uh, lasciviousness is used in Scripture, and defrauding. And so we got these different degradations, graduate gra gradations, rather, of, of degrading behaviors, say. And we tend to think that these are the most severe. And yet all of these have darkness in them. And if that be true, the question then becomes, well, what, what's, uh, what's the true light like? Look at the diagram here. Biblical marriage is, is what's over here in the pure, in the real light. The marriage, marriage where, look, it's honorable and all, and the bed is undefiled. But all these kind of defilements over here, no matter how extreme or how gray they are, have got the poisons, have got the bad stuff in it, because, you see, the real thing, the pure thing, is a scriptural marriage. And all others are uh, a substitute for the genuine light of God. Then there's religious darkness, and we had time. We could do Romans 1, when they knew God, they worshipped him as God. <clears throat> then we go to Satanism over here, and ant, uh, animism, and fetishism, and totemism, and polytheism, and monotheism, and, and agnosticism, and uh, atheism, and Russellism. And to get over here, we got New Age, and then we have humanism. Then we have what I call nominalism, where it's, it's basically a Christian religion, but you don't have to live it. It's just sort of ascent. And then over here we have denominationalism. And uh, here in the light, oh my goodness, do you know that Solomon said over here, I looked under the sun to the place of judgment and wickedness was there. Look at this. I looked over here and what he thought was light and it was iniquity was there. Jesus even described this zone when he said, many will say unto me, they, and say, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils, and we've done all kinds of wonderful things. And he said, I'm sorry, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity, because not all good-looking religious activity is godly. 
We have dark religious ideas. We have gray religious ideas. We have white magic. We have Christian looking humanism. But you see, the truth is, the absolute purity is the one who is called the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus. And in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. But every shade of darkness, every gray, is a trap, it's a snare to take us away from the light. Oh, there's darkness in the media. Over here in videos, and you could have absolute immoral, vain imaginations, and the scripture says their foolish heart was darkened, and then we got movies that uh, are rated differently and not seemingly so bad, but you know what? There are embedded wrong ideas, embedded darkness, even by implication in some of what are nice movies. Instead of uh, truth and purity and holiness, even the good movies are full of darkness. Darkness with hooks that keep pushing people and urging people in this direction, even as in music. Music is dangerous. Dangerous because it's gray at times. Dangerous because it has the pretense of light. It's even possible to have what some people call Christian music, and it's dark. Because you see, the singing of the gospel with a sensual sound, with certain body movements, with certain body language, it's like, it's not just whether or not the lyrics are right, but it's the spirit. There's a verse in here that says, the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. Do you know you can take the Bible and beat people with it? The letter will kill. That's why it's really important that when anyone ministers from this book, they minister not just what it says, but the way it says, and represent properly the feelings of God. And so there's darkness in music. And what should be the idea? Well, if you really went over here, you see the real thing over on this other side of the standard line here is real worship of God and the beauty of holiness. <clears throat> Then there's publications, there's darkness, gray magazines over here, and there's black magazines and copy and print and story and picture and put together. These ones over here in the grays you see at the checkout, but they are the hooks of Satan that move us. Same subject matter, clothed a little better. And uh, soap stories become dirty stories. But see, over on the other side is the word of the Lord. And his words are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of fire, purified seven times, the scripture says. And it, 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 you see, the darkness gets into every area of our life, even in clothing design. Over here, you can have transgender clothing. And the scripture's plain. The woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man, and neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are an abomination to the Lord. And then we got sexual clothing, sensual clothing, provocative clothing, defrauding clothing, the attire of a harlot described in the book of Proverbs. We got body language. And, but what is the pure stuff that we should be living over here in light? And the answer to that is that the scripture says that women should adorn themselves, look at this, in modesty. That's what's over there. That which becometh women professing godliness. Now, what we really got to do today is get this picture straight. If we accept darkness in any degree, look, look here at the diagram with me. If we live here in the darkness in any degree, what happens is that we will fight unnecessary battles. In fact, the scripture describes it this way, that the enemy will come in like a flood. A flood comes in on all sides around us. That's what happens if we live in any of the darkness. And what does God do when this happens? Look at this. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God, well, look at this, raises up the standard. That's what this is. A standard. A standard in which there is no darkness whatsoever. And he wants us to live on this side of the standard, where there is no darkness whatsoever. That way the enemy cannot get in. The first step to victory 
absolute victory is to understand the extent of the kingdom of darkness and know what it is you need to get out of not just the black, but the grays and even some of the whites. Look at the diagram with me again. You see, over here is murder. Jesus come along and he said, you know, he said, you've heard it said, thou shalt not kill. But I'm saying unto you, look way over here, that if a brother hates him, some, if somebody hates his brother, he's a murderer in his heart. You see, the stuff over here and the stuff over here is the same. One just doesn't get carried out, perhaps, into fruition. Look at this. Another one Jesus said. He said, uh, over here, thou shalt not commit adultery. That's a horrible thing to do. To cheat, to be unfaithful, to have no loyalty to the one that you covenanted to. It's terrible. It's a terrible thing. Everybody, I think, if they think about it, would admit it. Although we've gotten to the day when the darkness of adultery is not perceived as very dark at all. We cover it up with gray stuff that says, well, everybody has a right to be happy. See, Jesus said, you've heard it said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I'm saying that over here, he that looks on a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery in his heart. You see, the grays are as much the problem as these severe blacks over here. Now, while you're looking at the scripture, I want you to take another. I'm going to quote another verse for you. In fact, let me see if I got it. Here it is. It's one you know. It says that Jesus is able to save to the uttermost. Look at them. All them that come unto God by him. Now watch the diagram here. When is he talking about the uttermost this way? Or is he talking about the uttermost in this direction? I want you to know that when Jesus says he has the power to save, and that he saves to the uttermost, you know, there's not too many of us who don't know. We have enough experience. We've seen him work before. We've seen Jesus. We've seen him come walking out of the pages of the Bible right into a person's life. I've seen him change a drunk in 30 seconds. I've seen him change a drug addict. I've seen him change so many people over here so radically, so quickly. Nobody doubts that he can do that. That's why they call him Savior, because he really does save. We probably neglected that he saves to the uttermost in this direction. He wants to save to the, uh, not just the real, ugly, black, dirty stuff, but the stuff that looks like light but's not. The grays that are really blacks. The poison that's really there. He wants to get it all out of us. So let's understand that the intent of victory Movement from darkness to the light means movement not just from the severe darkness, but from the grays, from the light grays, and even from that that looks like it's okay, but it's not. You see, that's the promise he gave us when he said uh, he would be faithful and he would just be just. And he would forgive us our sins. And watch this now. He would cleanse us from all unrighteousness, all darkness, all the gray colored darkness, even the light looking iniquity disguised unrighteousness. He comes along to tell us that he wants to cleanse us. Look at this once again. The whole gamut of darkness from here to here. The first step to getting out of darkness into the light is to recognize the extent of the darkness. It's not just over here. It's not just here. But Satan works all the way over to what we call, I call this the bloodline. 
It's a line that it's drawn by the Lord. It's the standard that God sets. And on once you get on this side of this bloodline over here, well, my goodness, over there, there is no darkness whatsoever. No shadow. And that's what God's like. You see, that's why they call him in the scriptures the Father of lights. And every good and perfect gift that cometh down, cometh down from the Father of lights. And watch this, in whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. There are no compromises. There's just purity. Five steps on how to move absolutely from darkness to light. But step number one is to recognize the extent of darkness. And what I want to do is to spend a few more moments with you and let's go into step two, three, four, and five because when we follow them, we really will have fulfilled the marvel of this call, the call from darkness under the marvelous light. Some of the best music in the whole world is right out of the pages of Scripture. We sing the Scripture. We sing the Bible. In fact, the book of Psalms is 150 chapters, the biggest book in the Bible, 150 chapters of nothing but music to sing. And we've learned to sing not just the Psalms, but verses out of Proverbs and, and virtually every book of the Bible. And one of the great ones that we sing with gusto and well we should is found in 1 Peter chapter 2. And it says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now we should sing it with gusto because wrapped up in summary in this verse is the great calling that God has for both you and I. And it is a call out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look at the scripture with me. Here it is, the verse right out in front of you. Who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And we've been talking about the five vital steps for absolute victory. To know that you have moved out of the darkness into the light. Five Bible steps to get out of the darkness. Now, you say, well, is it that difficult? And the answer is yes. And I want to show you why it's difficult to get out of darkness. It's because over here in the book of Isaiah, we have this verse. Look at what it says. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Look at the next line that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. It's difficult sometimes to get out of darkness because if you have enough people telling you enough times that what is darkness is really not dark at all, but it's light. That wrong is right and right is wrong then you can understand how deep blinding that kind of bondage and darkness can really be. So we want to learn how to break fellowship with the works of darkness and to live in the light. The light of the scripture that gives us that promise that the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more under the perfect day. And the next verse says the wicked, the way of the wicked is as darkness and they don't even know at what they stumble. And so this question heavy upon us is how can we transition from darkness into this marvelous light? Here are the vital steps from scriptures. Step number one. We've talked about little review here and we'll get on with the rest. But watch this. We must recognize the extent of the kingdom of darkness. Look at the diagram with me. We've got Satan's realm over here, God's realm over here. And the question is, how far in this direction does Satan's kingdom, how far does his influence reach? And where does God's kingdom begin? Does Satan's kingdom start somewhere here in the middle of the darkness? Is it 
Is it to the edge of the gray starts to come in? Is it in the middle of the gray? Is it at the light end of the gray? Is it where the white starts to meet the gray? How far in this direction does darkness go? Where is the dividing line from the kingdom of Satan or the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light? How far does it go? It's shocking. It is shocking to understand the truth. Are you ready? I want you to see it right in Scripture. Scripture draws the line. Look at this. Look at this. Right in the middle of the kingdom of light. Satan reaches into the light. He looks like light. How do we know that? Here it is. Satan himself, look at this, is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it's no great thing, look at this, if his ministers also be transformed as if they were the ministers of righteousness. And what that means is that Satan's reach comes all the way over here into light territory, but it really isn't light. It's got devils in it. It's got satanic activity in it. It's part of the totality of his realm. And I know that might be a surprise to you, but I want you to be very careful to align yourself with these truths because the greatest disguise, the greatest treachery, the greatest uh, artificial, the contamination, the destruction, the waste that lays buried is in this one fact that people aren't just destroyed by this utter blackness and darkness out here. They're destroyed by the grays in their life. Why is it? It's because, look at this, Satan has hooks in these grays. He has hooks in these white areas. He wants to move us this way. And then watch what he comes along, and then he adds a little more, and always he's trying to move us in this direction. But his realm is way over here in the light. In contrast, let's take a look at what What's on the other side of this bloodline? What's on the other side of this kingdom of darkness? This darkness that extends to here. What's, what's on the other side? And here is the description of it here. God is light. And, and watch this because no darkness at all over here whatsoever. That's the safe place in the light. No darkness at all. You don't ever have to be afraid of God. There is nothing contaminating whatsoever in his kingdom. No darkness at all. And where is the standard? You see, the standard is this red line. It's this bloodline. It's this standard that God draws. And it's the difference between his kingdom and Satan's kingdom. It's the difference between true light and false light, grays and darkness. And what we're called, and this is, this is why this is really so important, look at the diagram again, is that this call out of darkness, it's not just to get rid of these darknesses out here and these darknesses out here, but the call out of darkness is the darkness all the way over to this edge, all the way back to here. All the gray. And even that which looks like light. Now, if you want to understand this from Scripture, let's just take a look at the diagram more. See, over here, this is the narrow way. And here is the broad way that leads to destruction. Let's do another diagram. You see, over here in God's realm, it's purity. Over here, there's mixture. By the way, the difference between purity and mixture is simply that pure has nothing else in it. No darkness at all. You have pure gold, there's no other, nothing else in it. Once you add something, now it's a mixture. 
You know, it's interesting. Watch the diagram with me because, you know, people think they know so much about Hollywood and movies and soap stories and, and magazines and advertising and cosmetics and all kinds of things. And, and uh, they may not talk about all these severe things out here. But they know all that's going on in this gray area. Who's divorcing who and who slept with who and all kinds of disgraceful things published in the gray magazines. And these people hold themselves up as if, hey, I'm in the know. I'm enlightened. You know, I, my wife is a, a wonderful person for many reasons, but one of them is simply this, and she gets a lot of ridicule in business. Because somebody will start talking about what's going on in the movie industry and she hadn't seen a movie for 15 years and doesn't know who the actors are and doesn't know what the gossip is and what the muck is going on and the grime and the dirt and the dust and the blackness and the disgrace and the embarrassment and the shame and the gory. And so she, they, they, they make fun of her. I kind of like that because let, watch this now. Because enlightenment is over here, this is a darkening experience and not an enlightenment experience at all. You see, purity is over there and mixture is in the middle. You know, in the Bible there were two trees in the, in, in, in the book of Genesis. One was the tree of life. That was over here. It was good. Everything on it was good to eat. But Satan came along and said, hey, there's this other tree, this knowledge of good and evil. You'll be like God, knowing good and evil. He wants you to know good and evil. Satan doesn't mind you knowing good if you can mix some evil with it because then the good becomes evil. And I suggest to you that the first step, and I know in my own personal deliverance, is I had to get rid of the grays. I had to understand, first of all, that to get out of darkness, I had to recognize the extent of darkness. Now, step number two. Got your teaching notes ready? Let's catch up. Number two, not just recognize the extent of darkness, but the second thing we need to do is to break fellowship with the works of darkness. All of them. Let's look at the scripture. Have, look at this, no fellowship. How much is that? Zero tolerance. Watch this now. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, take a stand against them. So it's not enough to understand the extent of darkness coming over to here. The second step is to break off fellowship, relationship with not just darkness, but well, look at this, with the works of darkness. Breaking fellowship with all the works of darkness. Now this is going to be tough because it may be radical to some of you to understand that God's asked you not just to break with this black, ugly, gory, terrible stuff here, but this gray, ugly, glory, terrible, white-colored stuff too. And there's a reason for it. Now, look at the scripture. The light, the light of your body is the eye. The good stuff that's going to come into your body is going to come in through your eye. Look at the scripture. So if your eye is single, your whole body shall be full of light. Look at the diagram there. You see, this is a single mind. Single eye looks only at the light. The double-minded man, on the other hand, is over here and becomes unstable in all his ways. Well, watch this next part of the verse. If your eye, however, is evil. You see, you don't have to just do these things out here. We look at them here. We use our eyes here. But if your eye is evil and sees, look at this, then the whole body shall be full of, look at this, full of darkness. And if therefore the light that is in you is really dark, how great is that darkness? And that is precisely why David said, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes, not one thing. We must not just recognize the extent of the kingdom of darkness, but we must break fellowship with darkness. Here's another reason. No man can serve two masters. You can't be on this side and this side at the same time, for you'll either hate the one and love the other, or you will hold to one and you will despise the other. Watch the diagram with me. 
Do you know how many people who live here and because they live here, they despise this over here? Because you can't have it both ways. You cannot serve God and mammon. Here's another reason why we have to break off. Don't you know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? A little poison here makes this whole thing poisonous. That's why the scripture comes along and says, look at this one now. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in you be not darkness. Oh, I can't emphasize this. Look at with me, friends. Don't miss these scriptures. Let them come with all of their profound simplicity. Take heed that the light that's coming into you isn't darkness. Don't be taken in the gray stuff. It's darkness. Here's why. Look at the next verse. Because if thy whole body is full of light, how do you get your whole body full of light? Look at this. By having no park part dark. Then the whole shall be full of light. As when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Oh, I'm telling you. That this movement from darkness to light is so wonderful. I'm not sure all of us are on the way there yet. And, and we will not be there if we don't ex recognize the extent of the darkness. And then if we don't take the second step of breaking off with all the works of darkness. Look at this thick scripture. There's another reason why. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Look at the question. For what fellowship? How can fellowship come between righteousness and righteous and unrighteousness? Let me tell you something. These two groups cannot get along because they, how can two walk together except they be agreed? What communion doth light have with darkness? If you mix them, you get gray and the light is, is gone. Here's another verse. What concord doth Christ with Belial or what part... Has he that believes on the one side with an infidel? You know, isn't it strange? One of the greatest treacherous activities of this generation in Christendom has been, hey, let's be like the world so we can attract them to the Jesus that we love. We had crossover music and we have all kinds of crossover activities that they can relate to. And the problem is that with all the compromises, Oh, uh, it wasn't they that crossed over into Christianity. It's the Christian young people crossed over the same bridge to the world. Because whenever you move out of the kingdom where there is no darkness, you move into a kingdom that allows a little darkness. And the little darkness always leads to greater darkness. So the scripture comes along again. And says, what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Don't you know you are the temple of the living God? That's what we are over here. Don't you see? There's no place for us in this realm whatsoever. In fact, look at the scripture. Wherefore, come out from among them, be ye separate, saith the Lord. Look at this. And don't even touch the unclean things. This is contamination zone all the way over here and watch it it's as contaminating right in this zone as it is over here have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness look at this but rather reprove them the second step after recognizing the extent of Satan's kingdom coming over here the second step is to break off right here with all the works of darkness take a stand rather reprove them Take an open stand against not just this stuff out here, but this stuff here. Every beer commercial your child watches, he's receiving advice and counsel from ungodly sources. Every cartoon depicting anger and violence, every song with sensual overtones, every soap story that's really a dirty story. You see... The holy can have no mixture. Pure means no mixture, no double-mindedness, no double standard. Stay out of the grace means victory. It cannot have victorious Christian living in the gray. Recognize 
the extent of darkness. And then number two, we need to break fellowship with all the works of darkness. Note the word works of darkness. It's free, see, freedom is really in the light zone. Break off with the fellowship with all the gray zone. How do you get out of darkness? Here we are. Number one, ex recognize the extent of darkness. Number two, break fellowship with the works of darkness. And then number three, come to the truth. And watch this delightful event. Look at this, because here's what happens. He that does the truth is coming to the light. That's how you get to the light. You get to the truth. See, the truth doesn't have any air in it. It's light. It's pure. It's true. It's holy. It's just. It's right. It's accurized. That's why Scripture comes along and says, Oh, the entrance of thy word, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. That's why David said, The lamp is a, thy word is a lamp to my feet. It's light to my pathway. The third step is to come to the truth. Do the truth. Watch it now. Recognize the extent of darkness. Break fellowship with all the works of darkness. Do the truth because that's what moves you into the light. And then number four, start walking in the light. Every day, in every way, in every part of your thought life, in your marriage, in your employment, in your relationship. Everything produces life because now you're walking in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light in every aspect. And what a glorious thing this is to get to walk in the light. Jesus, you know, put it this way. Here it is. He said, I am the light of the world. And whoever is following me, look at this, look at this shall not walk in darkness, watch this, but shall have the light of life. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, I would do anything I'd exchange for the personal knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when you follow Him, you're not following in grace, you're not walking in darkness, you're walking in the light. Look at this verse. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Look at this. Walk as children of the light. You know, there was a day when I wasn't simply in the dark. I was darkness to others. You who were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children. Walk in the light. This is number four. Let me tell you why it's important. Oh, this is so good. Um, we have moments left, and I hope you're catching this. And if not, um, make sure you call and get connected up to this truth. It will set you free. Look at this. If we say, look, look at this now. If we say that we have fellowship with God and we're walking in darkness, we're lying. We're over here. And we do not the truth. Because God doesn't walk in darkness. God doesn't fellowship in darkness. He fellowships in the light. And I want to tell you one of the, let me tell you two of the most exciting things I know of about walking in the light. Not only do you have the light of life and every aspect of your life is alive and going in the right, proper, truthful direction. But there's two byproducts of walking in the light. Here they are. Here's what it says. If we walk in the light. Now, if we're walking in the light as he, Jesus, is in the light. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. We have fellowship one with another. This is vertical fellowship with God. Walking in the light is the place of fellowship. It's exciting. Get ready because when you walk in the light, the first thing you get to experience, and all the time you're in the light, you will experience sweet fellowship with God. I'm not talking now about religion, not talking about having some form of religion, worship. I'm talking about a genuine relationship with God because as we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship the one with the other. Let me show you one more. Let me change the diagram just a little bit. 
because the cross, you see, is not just a vertical, it's got a horizontal. And if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another this way too. You see, our fellowship is not centered in some common denominator of geography or sport interest or hobby or business. That doesn't make for fellowship. What makes for fellowship is that when we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship this way, one with another, and one with another this way. You know, the fifth chapter of Ephesians, get down to verse 21, is all about this subject. And then it goes into marriage. Because one of the most critical elements to have a right marriage is a man and a woman walking in the light where there's no darkness at all. And oh, what fellowship sweet this way and this way. Walking in the light. How do you get out of darkness? Well, <clears throat> number one, recognize the extent of darkness. Number two, break fellowship with the work of the darkness. Number three, come to the truth. That's how you get in the light. Number four, walk in the light. And lastly, here it is, let your light shine. <laughs> look, look at what Jesus says about you. He says, you are the light of the world. Imagine that. You. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You become the personification of God's light. You. And he goes on to say, and neither do men light a candle and then put it under a bushel. But they put it on a candlestick and it giveth light to all that are in the house. And that's why he says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. This is not putting on a show. You see, you don't have, when you have a light shining, you don't have to try and make it shine. It just shines. This is no sham. This is no put up. This is no pretended. This is just letting the light shine. Because when you're walking in it, it just shines. Remember, more and more into the perfect day. No compromise. Scripture says, in light shall ye see light. And I tell you that when you walk in the light, you will have energy. When we walk in the light, we'll have less stress. We have single-mindedness. The scripture says the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. You see, if our gospel is hid, listen to this scripture. In fact, here it is. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. They're lost because of the grace. In whom, look at this, look at this, in whom the God of this world, Satan, look at this, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Watch this now. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. How do you get out of darkness? It's really simple. Recognize the extent of darkness. Deal with the grace. Break off fellowship with all the works of darkness. Come to the truth. Walk in the light and let your shine, let your light shine. Because the fact is, you are the chosen generation, the royal priesthood, a holy nation, the peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Thank you.